Good afternoon, gardeners. It's Sunday, March 21st, and it's the second day of spring here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but you wouldn't know it because of this windy cold front that is blowing through right now. However, despite this cold front, I still have spring on my mind, and I bet you do too. Now, last week, I published a video on these amazing number 15 nursery containers that I will be up potting many of my fruit trees into. And in case you missed that video, I will make sure to link to it above so you can check it out. Now, I was blown away by how many of you were looking for a container of this exact size, and I'm thrilled that I was able to help so many of you find exactly what you were looking for. While reading through the comments on the video, the most common comment that I received were from growers who were growing fruit trees in these fabric grow bags right here. And they were asking me, why was I spending more money on these containers when I could just be using these fabric pots? This is something I found to be very concerning based on my own experience, and I wanted to take this time to put together this video and caution you against this practice based on what happened to me when I tried growing trees in these fabric pots right here. First, I want to say that this is not a hit piece on fabric grow bags. I love fabric grow bags, and I have been using them and promoting them for many years. Since I started this channel, you've seen me grow tomatoes in fabric grow bags, peppers in fabric grow bags, watermelon in fabric grow bags. In fact, I grew my entire vegetable garden in fabric grow bags in 2015, 2016, and 2017 before I bought this house that I'm living in right now because I was renting and I couldn't dig up the property. I like these fabric grow bags so much that they are one of the first items that I ever added to my Amazon storefront that I link to in the description of all my videos. Fabric grow bags are great because they are very inexpensive, they are very strong and last many years, they provide great aeration to the roots and fabulous drainage, and they have convenient handles for moving around. And the handles are really strong too, so even when they're, full of, uh, when they're full of soil mix and you pick them up by the handles, they're still strong enough to carry these bags around. As I mentioned in my number 15 nursery container video, which I deemed the perfect fruit tree container, these large injection molded nursery pots are difficult to find and even harder to find affordably because they require such a large box to ship and shipping costs are usually really high. With these fabric grow bags that you can see right here, this is a number 20 fabric grow bag right here. You can buy these in number 25 and number 30 gallon size for only about $5 a piece. And since they easily fold up just like a pillowcase, you can see how easy that folds up right there. They can ship in small packages, usually for free. So clearly the thought process is, why should I spend more money on these large, hard to find, expensive to ship containers when I can easily get these bags for a fraction of the price that provide better root aeration and better drainage? Well, there is a really good reason why. Fabric grow bags are awesome for growing annual vegetables, but they're terrible for growing perennials and fruit trees, and here is why. A couple years ago, I decided to grow two palm trees in fabric grow bags. I decided to do this for the reasons that I listed previously. They were cheap, they provided great root aeration, and I already had them on hand. It seemed like a no-brainer, and all was well for a while. The trees grew quickly and nicely, and eventually they filled out the fabric pots. And that's when the trouble happened. Eventually, the roots burst through the bottom of the containers. They completely blew out, and they were growing outside of the bottom of the fabric pots. It was clear that the trees were becoming root bound, and it was finally time to up pot the trees into larger containers. When it came time to remove the trees from the grow bags, I found that I had a total disaster on my hands. Not only did the larger roots grow through the bags and puncture them, but the small hair-like feeder roots had literally sewn themselves into the fabric, just like a needle and thread. The bags were completely sewn to the root mass and impossible to remove. 
I had to take a pair of scissors and a utility knife and painstakingly cut the bags off the root mass. This process caused irrevocable damage to the root mass of both trees. This was probably magnified by the fact that palm trees have no dormancy period, so the shock of all that cutting was just too much for the trees to handle. Both trees could not recover from the root damage and died. It was a total mess, and for that reason I will never grow perennials or trees in fabric pots again because I now assume that the fabric pots will not be removable without extensive damage to the roots. As I just discussed in my recent video on pruning container grown trees, which I will link to above, you must periodically remove your trees from their containers every few years. This is because the trees will eventually become root bound and will require root pruning. The potting mix will eventually decompose and require refreshing and fertilizer salts will eventually accumulate in the potting mix requiring refreshing. Depending on the variety of tree and how large the pot is, you'll probably need to pull the tree every two to four years to refresh the mix and root prune. There is a good chance that you will wind up with the same disaster that I had when trying to remove the fabric grow bags, only to find out they are completely sewn to your root ball. For these reasons, I caution anyone that is currently growing fruit trees and fabric grow bags to consider removing the tree now before they become root bound and sewn to the bag and relocating them to an appropriately sized hard container similar to this container right here that I have linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. This way, the hard container can be easily removed when it comes time to up pot, root prune, or refresh the potting mix so you're not caught in a disaster like I was. Again, I still recommend these fabric grow bags for growing annuals because once annuals are finished producing, you don't have to worry about preserving the root mass since the plant is discarded at the end of the season. However, for perennials and trees, I strongly discourage the use of these fabric bags and urge you to pay a little bit more money for a hard container like this one that I have linked in my Amazon storefront. Spending a few more dollars on the hard container now beats losing your tree and losing all of the hard work you put into growing it years from now when it comes time to remove it from its container. So that's the end of my public service announcement based on my own experience. As always, I sure hope you found the video helpful, and if you did, please make sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about purchasing these hard containers, or you're curious about purchasing these fabric grow bags for the appropriate usage, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Yesterday, I made Dale a special meal with beef stew meat, chicken gizzards, broccoli, carrots, and white rice in the slow cooker. And he is just going crazy. We have to give him these puzzle bowls to slow down his eating because he eats and gorges so quickly and make himself sick. And these puzzle bowls do a great job at slowing him down. This is a man who's serious about food. Dale, 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 acknowledge my existence. Dale, acknowledge me. Laser focus. Buddy, Dale, I think it's gone. I think it's gone. I don't think there's anything left, buddy. If this bowl was painted, I think you'd lick the paint off of it. Buddy, it's all gone. I don't trust you. I must verify. Continue licking. Maybe there's some food under the bowl. Must check. Maybe some fell through crack. Maybe some fell on floor.